Visit the raspberrypi.org website and download Raspberry and Stretch Lite to your computer. Unzip the downloaded file. Download and install Etcher. Insert a blank SD card into your computer. Run Etcher and browse to the image file. Click Flash. When this is completed, remove and reinsert the micro SD card so you can see the new folder on your computer. In the boot drive that appears, create two new files. The first is an empty file which you should name SSH. The second is labelled WPA underscore supplicant dot conf. In this file you need to copy this information, but you need to change the country code to your own country code and the SSD and the Wi-Fi password to your own SSD and password. Remove the micro SD card from your computer and plug it into the Raspberry Pi and connect the power. Optionally you can connect the HDMI output to a monitor and watch the Pi booting up. When the Pi has booted up you can access it using an SSH client such as PuTTY. Enter the IP address of the Pi and then the username is Pi and the password is Raspberry. Now we are connected we need to set up a few things. Run Raspi config. Enable the Raspberry Pi camera. Change the memory split to 16. The Pi needs to be rebooted for these changes to take effect. When the Pi reboots we lose the connection. After the Pi has rebooted we connect again. There is a lot of updates and new software that has to be installed. Using this method of accessing the Raspberry Pi makes it very easy to install and update the software. If you are using PuTTY you can right click to paste any copied text into the window. For example I'm copying this command here. and I'm right clicking to paste it. And again here, copying, and right click to paste. Cleaning up after the updates and the installation of new software. Installing this library can make the image processing run faster.
This installs support for the camera. In some of my testing this command took a long time but it did complete. Now we're going to install dlib. The Debian version of dlib is very out of date so you need to compile this from source to get a new version. The Raspberry Pi Zero doesn't have enough RAM to compile this library. The swap file settings need to be changed to allow more space on the microSD card to be used as virtual RAM. This command opens the nano text editor so we can make changes to the configuration file. Change the settings to match the example. Then run this command to reinitialize the swap file. Create a directory for dlib. Download the source from GitHub. Move into this new directory. And start the compilation and installation of dlib. Don't be tempted to use your Raspberry Pi for anything else when it's compiling because it will probably run out of memory. Depending on the micro SD card, compiling takes from about 5 hours to over 12 hours on the Pi Zero. If you're connecting over SSH and lose the connection, you can run pip3 freeze to check dlib was successfully installed. Now install the Python face recognition library. Now change the swap file settings back to how they were before. It should look like this. Now reinitialize the swap file. Now download the face recognition code examples. Now we're going to run a quick test. We need to cd into face recognition forward slash examples. And run this command. On the Pi Zero it takes about a minute for the script to initialize. This test script loads an image of Barack Obama and encodes it. The script then runs a loop that takes a frame from the camera stream and looks for faces in that frame. If it finds a face, it then checks the encoded version of the face against the encoded face of Obama and prints a message. If you hold up an image of Obama on your phone to the camera, you should see the I see someone named Barack Obama message. Now that a basic test has been completed, let's see how we can use this system with a group of friends. Download the file in the description below and upload it to the face recognition examples folder. Then create a folder in the same directory called friends. Copy the images of your friends into this folder. I use a program called WinSCP for this. Run the new script and wait for it to initialize. When it is running, if you point the camera at someone whose photograph you've just uploaded, it should recognize them. If you connect your Raspberry Pi to a Bluetooth speaker, you can get the Raspberry Pi to say the name of the people it recognizes. Here's a quick run through. Install Blue Elsa.
restart the Blue Elsa service. Switch on your Bluetooth device. Start the Bluetooth CTL. Scan on. When your device is shown, if you type pair, space, highlight the ID of the new device and then right click, the device ID will appear. You can repeat this technique for the trust command and also the connect command. Type exit. Test it with the command shown. Front, center, front, left, front, right. Rear, center, rear, left. There's a few options for text to speech synthesis on the Raspberry Pi. Here we're going to look at two. The first is called eSpeak and is possibly the easiest one to use. Hello, your Raspberry Pi out of a man's voice. Hello, your Raspberry Pi out of a woman's voice. The second option that we're going to test is Pico to Wave, which has a nicer voice. So now with a small change to the Python script, we can get your Pi to announce visitors to your party. person was normally recognized but not this time Hello. Welcome to the party. this um, person was never recognized in any of my tests Hello. Welcome to the party. the text-to-speech system has a problem with some of the Spanish names <laughs> 